This is my 1996 Fiat New Holland 11090. And in this video, we're going to talk about doing a turbo conversion to the tractor. So what's the plan and what's the reason behind it? Well, the tractor, to be honest, I like using it for likes of drawn silage. Drawn slurry. The likes of that there. And why would you fit a turbo? Well, there's two reasons why you'd fit a turbo. First reason is, if you can get a properly sized turbo, I'm not talking something like a big massive hole set that gives you X amount of horsepower at the top end. I'm talking something that's usable for good everyday use. My thinking is a TO4 off an 8340 uh, New Holland slash Ford. And the reason for that being, when you're coming up the likes of a hill with 14 ton of grass on, which this tractor has pulled in stock form with the 5.9 standard Avico engine, putting out 110 horsepower, you're looking up at the 4 h harvester driver as the trailer's starting to fill and you're starting to go, uh, and you just watch the rev hand starting to drop and it does start to get a wee bit hairy. So if you had a properly sized turbo, you would get that low end grunt and it would just keep her a bit nicer on the revs. So that was my primary reason. The second reason is it sounds really, really cool. So if you haven't already guessed from listening to the podcast, I'm a little bit of a cheapskate. So what I've managed to do was I have got this Garrett TO4B off a Ford 8340 slash New Holland 8340. And after a little bit of uh, my good friend map gas here, we managed to unseize it from this manifold. Now, this manifold was cracked. So Sam, Sam Cole, uh, deals with uh, Forge and New Hans, based between uh, Derry and Letterkenny. Uh, have to give Sam a shout out. He had this turbo line. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know if I was a bit rasher and rougher, there's no longitudinal play. You know, the shaft doesn't move in and out like that. But you do have lateral play, as you can see here in the camera. And uh, I'll focus in a bit better there. You can see there's a bit of lateral play. And with that, we felt that it probably would just be a better idea to get the turbo done up. So it's off to Turbos Ireland and Money Dig to get the next stage of the process started. So we'll just get this lifted up and throw it into this box here. So the turbo's all boxed up and an old Pulsar turbo box I had lying about, so it's time to get this down the road. Here's a little Easter egg while we're doing the, the turbo conversion, or at least starting off with. So one thing you'll know about Fates, if you've any experience driving a Fiat 90 series, you'll know these headlights here. The originals, the glass ones, are complete dog <laughs> They are so bad. And see the last time I was drawn on Sailage O'Connor, like when you were coming along. Now, thankfully, I have these lights here as well which they come on with a relay on full beam, lights up the entire road. And that's fine, you're driving at night with nobody about. And see, whenever you meet another tractor in the road, you may as well stop, you cannot see a thing. So, I've bought myself a set of these UTV lights, and also a fitting kit for a 11090. Got these from Taylor Jackson. Uh, so, I was originally gonna do a time lapse uh, of me fitting these, and then I remembered Nobody really wants to see that. Okay, so that's maybe not entirely fair. I probably should show a bit of a difference between the UTVs and these. By the way, I'm not sponsored by UTV or anything. It's just, um, I know they're a good job. However, if UTV does want to sponsor me, I'd be more than happy with that. But anyway, so these here, some could obviously argue that these here are a much more modern looking light. Now they are square, obviously, and they're designed to fit the likes of this tractor, um, say like a 6170 Massey, a TM, and that's why you have these. That's why you have this, the actual fitting kit. So, people could argue that maybe this makes the tractor look a bit too modern. Personally, I don't care because I'm using it and that's what I want. So, it comes with the same setup, uh, simply just a plug and play into the 110, as you can see. Well, I'll bring the camera around, go around the side, 
ignore my fact my battery is moving about that's a story for another day so i have to find a way of taking all this out and putting the new ones in so i could stand and take a video here but all you would see is the back so i don't think that really does much justice for anybody so i'm going to go on ahead and try and get this fit at now four bolts holds the front cone off in these so hi uh, you can see they're probably just a wee bit uh too long new at this point Probably shouldn't really be holding them by the wires either, like it's not really a good idea, but for all length of time we'll be at it. So let's get this off as soon as we can, because it's starting to scare me a bit. So to be fair, that seems to be sticking out the same way as the old one did. If it's a little bit further out, I don't really mind, but on a first inspection, I seem to have it spaced correctly, as you can see here. Get a bit of focus on that. I think I have it the wrong way around right enough, so I probably need to take that and change that a bit. So as we can see, there's both in. I have a couple more wires to sort out here, so just stuff that's pulled out and whatnot all. Yeah, look, this is trash. The battery tray in here is absolutely mangled. Tin worm fix feats real badly. I'm not going to fix that today. The reason being is this whole front end will be off again for a longer period of time when the turbo's been fitted, which we'll get to in a bit. So for now, this is all going to get put back together and just test it. They're in. I haven't the yard fully on yet because I just wanted to test. They were all right, but. I told Taylor I'd have them in and out in 30 minutes. That didn't happen. It took a bit longer than that, so I'm glad I didn't try and do a time lapse. I'm too miserable to buy more memory cards as well, so uh, the short form version I'll have to do. But unless things uh, go wrong here, we have light. So obviously it's still somewhat bright outside at the minute, so. Won't be able to test this out for a while, but maybe in a bit we'll get a run out the road. Whether I record that or not, I don't know, but for now, I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll get it all built up, and then I'm going to bring the tractor further in and start explaining the manifold side of things. As you can see, my shed isn't the best lit up, but let's talk manifolds for a second, okay? So when you're turbocharging your feet, there are, to my understanding, two different ways you can do this. Now, I'm going to use the second option, but I'll quickly explain the first option. So this is a standard 11080 manifold. You've got your front half, or well, this is arguably your back half. You have a spacer ring in the middle, and you have your front half. That connects onto your exhaust, and up your exhaust gases go. Hopefully in the form of black smoke, if you're anything like me. However, you can buy a kit, and you can go to... MDE in cash, Agri Spares Noma. I'm sure there's plenty of places across the country that do that. I'm from the north. Um, that's just who I happen to know. And you can go to them and buy basically a kit, a full bolt-on kit for this tractor. And basically, all you have to do is remove the exhaust. You have a coupling sort of setup that goes over your manifold here. Your turbo bolts on over that. You have, well, in a car it'd be a downpipe, I guess, and the tractor is just an exhaust. will come out and round, and you bolt it on here, you bolt your stainless pipe up there. There's a setup that goes on to your inlet, which is in here, and has the oil lines and all that along with it. And to be honest, I know a couple of fellas that run this setup, and their tractors are absolute monsters. But... I wanted to do it the more OEM spec look, so I'm choosing the second option, which I will explain now. So, option two, you have to remove your entire original manifold and replace it with a manifold of a 13090. This is the same setup if you watch the Grassman video, maybe I'm teaching you how to suck eggs. When they did the twist of fate 11090, this is the exact same setup they used. I'm just going to go into a wee bit more detail than what they did because I have a couple of other things I want to do instead. But I originally thought, could I not just keep the front half, or sorry, the back half of the 11090 and only buy one part, the turbo part of the 13090 manifold? No, you can't. The, the, the diameter 
of the actual manifold itself is a different, is a different size, which means if you were to mount the two up, it would be uneven. So you need to buy this, the back half. You have to buy what's called a spacer ring, and this goes between the front half of your manifold and the back half of your manifold. I am holding the back half at the minute, although I keep call accidentally calling it the front half because I'm an idiot. But anyway, you know what I mean. Spacer ring goes in here. This is where your standard manifold is different from the 13090 manifold. So here, your standard manifold simply comes up, as you can see, into an exhaust. Here you have a bolt for a turbo. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is a T3 turbo flange. So if you're into your turbos and you know all that stuff, this is a T3 turbo flange, which means this also suits the likes of, the likes of a, a big Holset HX35, which I actually originally planned to put in this tractor. And uh, people who followed us on TikTok would know that I talked about this a lifetime ago. Holset HX35 uh, turbo originally came off a Cummins 6BT engine, as far as I'm aware, which you would see in the Daft lorry. Had a dipl displacement, you need to get that said right, of 5.9 litres. What else is a displacement of 5.9 litres? The 5.9 8065.05 engine that comes in a 11090. So, what I'm thinking I have is it's a T3 turbo, which I believe is what the 13090 slash F140 manifold, yada yada, will have. Which means I have a turbo basically sitting ready for this tractor. And as I alluded to in the original, the first part of this video, I said you can put a massive turbo on and make loads of power. But the problem is that happens up at the top end. And I want something that is more responsive down low. So as great as the whole set would be, and you could screw the absolute life out of it, two things would happen. One, 11090 engines uh, are different from the likes of an F130 or a 13090, or the likes of your Evico lorry engines, which a lot of boys do use to transplant into these, and that the pistons don't have this protective lip, which means they don't cope with heat the same way. Which means if you start pushing on and throwing more diesel at the tractor, uh, you're going to end up creating a lot more heat. The second thing, actually, speaking of throwing a lot more diesel, is that the 110 itself doesn't have a good enough injection pump to fire all this diesel at the big turbo. So it's wasted. So for me, I want something that's kind of running out of breath at 150, 160, but I'm getting good response from the whole way. Up. So that's what works for me, hence going for an 8340 turbo. So when you go to buy your turbo kit, there is one other part of the puzzle that you need to buy from the likes of MDE or whoever you decide to get this kit from, and that is this, and that is a gasket. And that simply goes on to the likes of here and seals up basically any gap of air that could basically bypass coming out of your engine and into the atmosphere rather than going into your manifold and through the turbo so you want these now weirdly or maybe not weirdly if you're a tractor man but i come from the car background this is all single piece units so i had to buy six of these do not use your old gaskets just don't they're not expensive buy new ones so we'll take a look at the engine now now we've got a bit of light in the subject if you notice a change in like the audio quality I was using my phone, I have an external microphone that works enough for this. Now I've got to use a setup for my camera, which isn't near as good, but here we are. So there's a few different ways. One of the most important things when you're obviously putting a turbo on your engine, not only do you feed it with air slash exhaust gas, you also need to feed it with oil. Now there's a few different ways to do this. I'm going to go for what I think is the simplest option. Now this might maybe be what other people will do, but this is what I'm going to do. So you need to give your, your turbo, which will be sitting up here obviously, an oil feed and an oil return. The oil feed, I believe there's a lot of, this is an oil gallery running along here. And I believe you can take out any of them, uh, the likes of here, here, etc. And I believe if you take any of them out, you'll get oil, which is fine. That's grand. However, I'd be more worried about ringing the head and them bolts because God knows the last time them grubs ever come out. Not even bolts, sorry, grub screws. So what I'm going to do, and this is what an R chap done on one of the pages I'm on, is he used this. And this is your oil pressure sensor, or oil pressure switch. I'm going to take 
this line here and basically run a T-piece and the oil, the sensor will plug in on this side of the T-piece and I'm going to feed up to the turbo from the other side. So that's the oil feed sorted. Remember you need to restrict it in some way shape or form if you're planning on running a big line up or just get the correct sizing. I'm going to run a dash 4. That's how we feed most of the turbos going to the cars as well so I assume it's going to be the same for the tractor. For the return I'm going to do it the exact same way your man did it in the grass man video which is run the end of here. This is basically an oil level switch on the dash. I don't think there's anyone in the country has ever used this because I wouldn't trust it. I would just use the dipstick which is here. So the turbo return which is sitting up here, I'm going to run and bring it down into here. Some people knock out, I believe you can knock out these cores. Um, some people run them in there. Bob's your uncle, I don't know. I'm just going to go for what I think is the simplest option and run it in to here. Oh, there's me.